What up, what up, what up, what up, y'all? Oh, I said I was gone. Look at what I bought. I bought a microphone because, as y'all know, there is an echo in my in my space. And so I was trying to improve that, but I did not have time to open my microphone before I hopped on live. Yes, I covered tummy tuck scars. The candidate, the consultation application is in the bio. So if you click on the bio, it says request a consultation. You can upload a photo. You answer all of the questions to see if you're a candidate. You upload the photo. And then um, if you're a candidate, we send you a link to book. If you're not a candidate, then I send um, recommendations. So the answer is yes to whoever just asked that. What up, what up, what up, what up, y'all? Happy Monday. I was literally going to come on here and talk about something else. But I felt like this was helpful and maybe this will help somebody. And I think it's just, a you know, tips for us who are business owners to keep these things at the top of our mind and to um, just kind of evaluate where you are. What exactly do I do? That's a good question. Thank you, Josie. I am Latoya Danique, a.k.a. The Scar Alchemist, and I empower individuals to live a life full of choices, freedom, and satisfaction by offering camouflage tattoos. So what are camouflage tattoos? They are a form of medical tattoos, unlike traditional tattoos. So I don't do designs. I don't do cover-ups. I don't do any of that. What I do is I custom create ink to match people's skin tone and I help cover scars. No, that's a great question. And I'm thank so thank you that you, I, I appreciate you asking me that because I forget that everybody who hops on live may or may not know who I am. So that's a great question. I am a oncology nurse practitioner, now turned medical tattoo artist based in Atlanta. And that is what I do. So I left um, the healthcare field right in the middle of a pandemic in 2020. And I transitioned into this role because I saw a need for it tremendously. A lot of my cancer patients because I treated cancer. A lot of my cancer patients were looking for these services and they weren't pleased with the amount of people who um, who were offering the services. When I did a search for one of my clients, that was kind of how I got here. It was a passion project to help one of my breast cancer survivors. I just thought she didn't know how to use the internet and I thought she was putting in the wrong stuff in Google. So I, I told her I would help her out and I would find her somebody. And literally when I went to search myself, I realized that um, this market was untapped. It was underrepresented by people of color, underrepresented by women, and I got angry. And then I got focused, and so here we are. So three years later, I have built a successful business. I now teach um, artists locally, internationally. Um, I have an online course. I have a two-day virtual course where I teach students live virtually, and then I have a two-day in-person training that I offer here in Atlanta. And so I'm coming today, and usually um, I hop on live and I talk about different things that are industry-related. I, I hop on live and I talk about things going on um, as far as camouflage or business tips, or I hop on live and I do book reviews. So today I was supposedly going to wrap up, because I've been talking about this book for like a month, We Should All Be Millionaires. And I have not been able to talk about it. And so it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to talk about it today because this one is going to be pretty short. The, the, in two days, you can be certified. So in two days, you will get a certificate. Now, what it requires depends on your area. So the certification is that says to the insurance company, that says to um, the health department, that says to whatever your local jurisdiction is that you have been trained in this area. That does not mean that you will be able to start working immediately because only the local jurisdiction can determine that. So you have to follow the laws and regulations in your area and they are not, they are not universal. So what one county uh, determines that, you know, is necessary for a tattoo artist could be very different from the next county in the same area. So you will have a certificate that says you have been trained and you've studied and you know how to be safe and you know what to do and all of those things. It does not mean that you will be able to just go out and start working. So that is clear. So yes, you will be certified. Yeah, and it, it it varies widespread throughout the United States within the city limits. 
No, you don't have to have a medical background. So that's a great question. Y'all are asking good questions. This was not supposed to be an FAQ, but I really appreciate this. No, you do not have to have a medical background. Um, I think it has helped me be a better artist. And, um, but the beauty is in all of my students, because I do have a medical background, I teach it to people who do not. So I know how to translate that to artists because the average uh tattoo artist or the average permanent makeup artist like the girl who does brows or the the average beauty pro who transitions into this community or this this area of knowledge does not have a medical background but I've also was a teacher for five years before I became a nurse practitioner so I have a wealth of knowledge I know how to teach I know how to communicate and I can teach you from the gamut of my mind as far as like all of my all of my experience. So you don't have to have a medical background. It probably helps, but that doesn't, you know, necessarily guarantee your success. I teach it as if you don't, because I know that that's almost like a rare commodity. And I'm one of the few people in this industry that does. So no, you don't have to have to have a medical background. Um, it's called medical tattoos because most of the scars, thank you so much. Most of the scars that I treat are from surgical scars. These are like People who have had some kind of surgical trauma, have had some kind of surgical scar, um, domestic violence, self-harm. You guys have seen things like that. And so they're medical tattoos because um, they're not traditional, meaning that I'm not drawing designs. I'm not doing butterflies. I don't even do cover-ups of, you know, tummy tuck scars or anything like that with, with tattoos, with designs. I'm literally making ink to match your skin tone, and it looks like concealer but it's permanent that's the that's the concept if you don't understand what that is it's almost like having permanent foundation to cover up the scars and um it improves the appearance and so nobody even knows it's a tattoo when it's done so that is what i do and i thank you for reminding me to introduce myself every time i hop on here because i forget how live works sometimes because i do it often enough and i take for granted that all of y'all don't follow me so, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that follow button, follow your girl. I also have a YouTube page, and I'm trying to grow. So, follow me on YouTube, The Scar Alchemist, and um, like, comment, subscribe to all the things. Ch tell your friends to tell your friends to tell your friends. What about dark circles under the eye? So, I don't offer that service. Um, I don't think that, personally, I don't think it looks very natural when it heals. And I will just give you a little tip when people ask me about it. A lot of times students will ask me about it. And even when, when potential clients will inquire with me about that, I tell you to run your finger up under your eye and feel how thin the skin feels. And then run your hands around your face. And if you can feel the difference, to me, the skin under your eye is so thin, tattooing that area doesn't heal naturally sometimes you have like creases up under your skin if you ever got your makeup done professionally and you know what it looks like when your makeup gets old sometimes your makeup can crease and those like fine lines like i have these lines child i have these little lines around my i have this little line right here the baby your girl might botox it in a little while i never thought so but when i be getting on live all the time i be seeing all these lines and wrinkles on my face like oh lord I'm getting old but my point is those those lines that happen as like your makeup settles and all of those things to me it doesn't really look natural because it doesn't look it doesn't look good so it's not a sexy look so i don't offer it i specialize in like things looking natural and i want you to have like girl i appreciate it honey i appreciate it you know how i do black don't crack but it it do it do uh it it do do what it do but yeah it don't crack it don't really crack but <laughs> you right <laughs> I thank you. I appreciate it. But today, this is going to be a real quick, this is for anybody who is in any kind of like service industry and you get negative reviews. So, hey friend. Hi. How are you? I heard you last week when we were, or a couple weeks ago when we were chatting and you were like, I really look forward to your lives. And life has been life in. So, this is the day that I, this is my down day when I do consultations. You need to pick my brain. You know you could do that. You know I offer that. Go ahead and go ahead and book you a book you a uh, book you a coaching call, and we could just chit chat and talk if that's what you need. Um, but yeah, I I this is usually my down day. I focus on dual consultations these days, so I have a little bit more time. So a lot of times I fill it up with other stuff, and so I have not made my lives my priority 
all the time, consistently. I get on here on Mondays, but I don't always, always, always get on here. Like last year, that was my focus. I did live. Probably I might have missed like four lives the whole year. And this year has not been the case. I get on here. I try to get on here on Mondays, but I don't always be committed because I didn't know y'all was really missing your girl. But not that I know that I am that girl that y'all want to listen to on Mondays. I'm going to get back on here on Mondays. And I'm really trying to figure out how I can make my lives, how, how I can cross it over to YouTube. So if somebody know how to do that, I know it's a way, it's some kind of application, it's some kind of platform where you can like do it all in one. Somebody DM me that. I would really appreciate that. But today's focus, this, t this chat, this, this chit chat that we're going to wrap up really quick is, hey, hey, weird individual. I give discounts for the ones. So, <laughs> we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. It is how to, what does the topic say? Business tip. I don't forgot what I typed in. How to handle negative reviews. So, I will just give you guys an example of what happened today because we're going to keep it all the way 100. I just got a negative Google review. I really am proud of my Google reviews. I have a five-star review right in on Google, and that really means a lot to me. And I read through the reviews to see what people say. And I know people read reviews because I'm a review reader, baby. I be on Amazon reading the reviews. I be reading the comments. I be reading all the things, and I be reading in between the lines. And tons, I will probably say about... Honestly, about 70% of my clients come from Google, maybe 30% from Instagram. They usually kind of find me on Google and then follow me on Instagram because they see my, I see I have a social media page. So a lot of my clients find me on Google and they will say, I read your reviews, I read your reviews, I read your reviews. So I'm always asking my clients to write reviews because I can say I'm the best, but it really matters what clients think, right? Um, if, I'm, if I'm the only one that love what I do versus the clients aren't happy with the results, it kind of really doesn't matter. So I have a five-star re review rating on Google because um, one tip is I only ask reviews from clients that were like extremely satisfied. Now, let's be clear. Everybody don't write reviews. People be saying all the time, okay, girl, because I always be like, do you mind writing a review? Do you mind writing a review? Because people don't think about it. A lot of times my clients don't want to write reviews because they also don't want people to find them. People was. I had a client that asked me, is my name going to come up? I'm like, in a Google review? Yeah, girl. Like, I don't control that. That's Google. Yes, your name comes up. You'll see people's initials comes up. So sometimes you might not get reviews because people don't want other people to, child, everybody think they famous. So... You know, people don't want people to know they came to you, especially with, with what I do. People are very, very, very protective of their scars. They're very, very, very embarrassed and insecure about um, their scars. And they're even more embarrassed and insecure that they're embarrassed and insecure. It's such a mind fuck. I tell people that all the time. People are so, they carry a lot of shame with their scars. And then they're embarrassed that other people know that they're embarrassed about it blows my mind but that is the tra the trauma and the shame that people carry so i already know that so a lot of times people will be so happy with the results but they don't want y'all to know so they don't want y'all to see their faces and they don't want other people to know that something like this bothered them so i don't get uh, i don't uh, you know that's how it works I know that so i am very thankful sometimes people don't write reviews because they don't want to bash company sometimes well no child that ain't the case Hence the topic of today. Um, <laughs> here we go. That's why we here, right? So that is that. So I always think that you know, if it's a if it's a review that's like sincere, if it was like something that the company or the you know, I always feel like if you if you feel like somebody can improve something, especially when it's a small business. Let's be clear, we ain't talking about Target. You write a review, a bad review on Target, child, don't nobody care because it's a billion and one targets. If you write a bad review on a small business, meaning like there aren't even a lot of people that offer that service, that is a big deal to that company. So me getting a bad review is a big deal to me because. I am one of the very few people who offer this service, right? So that is that speaks volumes to that. So if you write a bad review, just as the person writing a review, let's, you know, I ain't going to tell you what to do. I'm just telling, I ain't even going to tell y'all what to do. So fun is that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I ain't going to tell y'all who to, who to, who to write a review for, who not to write a review for, don't, don't write a review. This is what I'm going to tell you. I am telling the people who get the reviews, this is how you to respond, okay? Because this is how I feel. So I'm going to give you my viewpoint and then all y'all who are on here with businesses, feel free, 
feel free to drop in and let me know your thoughts on this. Or we're just going to see if we can all help each other out. Because at the end of the day, that is what we're all here for, right? It's really community. Like, maybe I don't do what you do, but maybe you've been through this situation in some way or other form. And you can also help. So, I'm going to give y'all a snapshot of what happened today. So, if you guys don't know... Again, thank you for Josie because she reminded me I offer medical tattoos. Now, everybody who reaches out to me is not a candidate. The way that we know who people are candidates, I have a consultation application. So it is about, it's like a three-minute quiz that people have to fill out online and they have to answer a bunch of different questions. I do not tell people when they call me on the phone what makes you a candidate, right? Because I want people to give me an honest answer. I won't tell you the answer that I'm looking for. So the, the consultation is totally ambiguous. You go in there. Now, there's some questions where I ask people like, hey, where are you from? That just helps me with my data. I can just see where most of my clients come from or, you know, when I'm marketing. If people, if ain't nobody from the Midwest coming to your girl, then I won't even focus my efforts in the Midwest. If everybody is right here from Atlanta, then boom, I know. So it just helps me know where people are coming from. So I use like some of those questions. They're really just data. I'm just getting data, right? But there are specific questions that people have to answer a certain way in order for them to get through the application. So it is a screening form that is totally free. The consultation application is free. Meaning, if you're curious if this works for you, there is an application for you to fill out to see if this works for you. There are answers in there that if you answer it a certain way, it will say, hey, unfortunately, you're not a candidate because, right? You don't even have to waste your time talking to me. I don't have to waste my time talking to you. The application alone stands for that, right? So that is the first thing. If you make it to the end of the application, you are required to upload a photo if you only have one area or a video, if you have multiple areas, because the form only allows you to upload one, one thing, only one, one video, one photo. So if you have multiple areas, do a video. If you have one area, do a photo, right? That is how it works. I personally, my, I myself, I personally review every single application request that we get. Now, I'm going to be realistic with y'all. 100% of the people are not candidates. On average, depending on what's going on in Scar Alchemy Land, meaning my business, you know, depending on what's going on, you know, if it's tax season, we get a whole bunch of requests. <laughs> I had a I had a reel that went viral. It has like um, like five million views when this reel was like I'm talking about millions of views, y'all. I got like one month. I got like about 300. We counted them. I had like 398 consultation applications. So I personally reviewed 398 pictures or videos a month. That's a lot. Now, that doesn't happen every month. On average, it's probably like around 150. Out of the 150... I would probably say about 40% of those people are candidates, not even half. So less than half are candidates for various reasons. Sometimes they just got a scar that happened two weeks ago. You're not a candidate. Sometimes that it's in an area that I don't tattoo. You're not a candidate. You know, sometimes people are just like not interested to pay for what the services are. So you are not a candidate. So there are a bunch of different reasons why people may not be a candidate, right? So I personally review them all and I only offer consultations to people who I know I can help. I only offer consultations to people I know I can help to minimize the fact that you and I both take time out of our schedule to talk to one another and then you get disappointed because I say, hey, unfortunately, I can't help you. Now, rarely on occasion, somebody gets through the loop and they are not a candidate and that is what happened today. Now, I did a consultation with a young lady who was interested in a service I do not offer. However, based on the consultation application, there was no way for me to know that the one thing she was talking about, I don't offer. She said she looked up what I did offer and she booked the consultation based on that. But a lot of times people don't quite understand what I do. And even though I have like frequently asked questions and I, you know, people DM me, I answer people's DMs because I don't want you trying to book a consultation and I don't offer a service either. But that is what by definition a consultation is. It helps you as the customer and me as the service provider decide if we're a good fit. Now, some people offer free consultations. I don't. 
I do not have the time. I just told y'all one month I had 398 consultations application requests. Who in the hell do y'all think I would be able to service if I talked to 398 people for one hour because my consultations are 30 to 45 minutes. So we gonna round that up to in the hood an hour. If I talked to 398 people on the phone because they were interested in my services, that's 398 hours, baby. That's a whole month and some change. That's damn near like two months of talking to people Monday through Friday. I would never be able to do any work, right? Again, I also really screen those applications. And sometimes when people send in photos, many of people will tell you, I have asked them to send in multiple photos because I'm like, what do you, I don't even know what you're talking about. Sometimes what, what's, what's important or what's, what makes matters to somebody, what they're insecure about, it may be something that nobody else notices. Sometimes people will have a little, a little dot by their eye and I look at the photo and I scan that bad boy and I'm like, I don't know what it is that you're even talking about. And people will say, oh, it's right here. Okay. So that happens sometimes too, but there's a lot of back and forth that goes on in these consultations. And then sometimes I look at the photo and what I think they're bothered by is not what they are actually bothered by, which is what happened today. This client had a, what I think to be like a birthmark or a mole on her lip that she wants that birthmark or that mole gone. I don't offer a service that will bleach out that birthmark or that mole. And so after I talk to her and I also try to clarify when we're doing a consultation, let me make sure that what you want, I ask people like, what are your goals? What is it that you desire? I always ask people that that way, what it is that you want is what I, what I would deliver. What it is that you are willing to pay for is what I will deliver. What it is that I will give you, what I deliver, that is the goal that you want. So at the end of it, you are pleased with what happened, right? Nobody wants to spend money on a service where you're like at the end, it's like when you go in to get your hair trimmed and they tr and they cut your hair. You like, no, baby, I want it. I want it. I wanted you to trim this much of hair. I did not want you to cut this much of hair. I wanted my hair to be brown. I didn't want it to be burgundy. I wanted for you to, uh, you know, clean my brows up. I didn't want you to get rid of my brows. Right. That's the whole point of the consultation. So the consultation is so me as a service provider and the artist can clarify and make sure that you as the client get what you want with the service that I offer. If I don't offer a service that you desire, that's also what makes the consultation beneficial because the last thing you want to do is pay your money, come in, take off work, get here, and for me to be like, yeah, I don't do that. Or for you to pay your money, me do it, and then you get done and you're like, this is not what I wanted because at the end of the day, this is a tattoo. It's permanent, right? So I am trying to ensure that that happens way, way, way on the front end on occasion because sometimes the way that i describe the service is not the way that people understand the service there's a disconnect which is why the consultations are a requirement for every client that's why i talk to every single person i tattoo there is nobody who i tattoo who i've not had a thorough 30 to 45 minute consultation every person i touch i have had a consultation about everything we talk about goals we talk about post care we talk about pre care we talk about after care we talk about what to expect we talk about all of those things so when they come in they know exactly what they're getting into on occasion that's not the case so that happened today i had a i had a consultation with a client who wanted a service that i did not provide and i could see her disappointment but what i do offer when that happens is I give you referrals of people who I know do that service very well and who I would recommend you to. I refer people. I clarify and say, oh, you were looking for this. <clears throat> so the next time you go looking for that, use these terms so that the person will know exactly what you're talking about. I also sometimes clarify because sometimes we might spend five or ten minutes and me going like, okay, so what are your goals? And then they will try to explain. You know how people are like, well, I want this, but not this and not that. And you as the provider are like, can you show me a picture? What is it that you want? You know what I mean? Like, since this is so permanent and this is something that really matters to people, I always try to make sure that, like, I understand what you're talking about. So if I don't understand what you're talking about, I'm not going to touch you. If you can't communicate what you're talking about, I'm not going to touch you. If you don't seem to understand what I say when I tell you what you're going to get, I'm not going to touch you. When I tattoo people, we are on the same accord. You know what I'm going to do. I know what it is that you want, and I know that I can help you. If one of those does not line up, you do not, you are not my client. 
I would not, I would not tattoo you. I would not touch you. I would not work with you because I don't want to disappoint you. And I don't want to know at the end that I provided a service that you were clueless about or that you were not, that is not the desire that you wanted, right? So with that being said, sometimes you get negative reviews for that and people are just really disappointed. So what the young lady said was, uh, she spent 30 minutes with me for me to tell her that I could not help her. And then I gave her a referral. Um, but you know, she didn't, basically she didn't want to hear that. And she said that she thinks that this probably happens all the time, which is why my, uh, consultation fee is non-refundable. My consultation fee is non-refundable because I'm going to need you to show up. So if it was refundable when y'all forget when your boyfriend call, when you uh when you driving in the car, when an extra number of things happens, I used to have free consultations and people would not show up. And then I had $50 consultations and some of the people showed up. Now that my consultations are $100, I have a 100% show rate. There is a fee so that you value my time and I also value yours. It has nothing to do with what is said during the consultation. Secondly, this is an industry standard for this type of service. People ask for consultations for hair. I've been to, I've gotten my hair colored and, a, and the artist did a consultation. So they offer consultations for many things. You gonna get a consultation from me. But the whole point is because I don't want you to get here and not know what the going on. Okay, so we gonna minimize that. This is a big deal and I want you to understand that. And I also want you to value my time and I want you to understand that I value yours. So that's the purpose of the consultation. Now, again, so... With all that being said, to help you guys who, you know, in the event that you get a negative consultation, the first thing to do is to, one, remain professional, right? Backstory is always respond. That's a tip for Google. Always respond to Google. Google will tell you that. If you get a review, they'll say, hey, please, to uh, make sure that people know that this is legitimate business, to make sure that clients know that you value your customers, um, to make sure that people see, like, a real response, because y'all know we in the age of AI for real, and you don't want, uh, nobody wants to be worked on by a bot, right? So just so it don't seem like it's a fake thing, always respond. Respond when it's, when it's a positive comment and respond when it's a negative comment so the way to do that is to like as soon as somebody writes review i try to respond right then because you know how sometimes sometimes the the person's name is not their name as you know them as like i have a client her name is keisha in her google review it might be sh345 i don't know who that was but because i will remember something that she mentioned in the review i know exactly who that was that said that so i go ahead and respond as soon as it happens i do the same thing in the event that i get a negative re review so if they write something that you think is like totally false i would say put a pause on that go have you a cup of coffee or you know do a little woosa go listen to your favorite rihanna song and then calm the fuck down before you come back and to respond if you cool because you you know what happened, you know what I mean, and you recall it, I will say one, always remain professional but because you're not just responding to that person. You're also setting the standard for anybody else who writes a negative review or other people read the review. So if you get a negative review, it's all, I'm going to say this for the end. If you get a negative re review, always remain what, what was I saying? Professional, not positive. Always remain professional, meaning don't be like, girl, the reason why that ain't what happened, mm -mm -mm, I can't believe you spent your time to write it. Don't do none of that. Just remain professional because you are a professional, right? And there are going to be times when people are not pleased with the outcome of the service or the product you provided. And if you remain professional, many times people can read between the lines of what happened or they still appreciate the fact that like, okay, cool. That's how she handles conflicts. So remain professional, right? Okay. Secondly, try to address that person's concern. So if it says like, hey, you got a product. Hey, I placed the order and it did not come in two weeks. Like I said, let them know what happened because sometimes you can't say that in whatever you got going on. You might not be able to say, honey, that was a UPS thing. I called da, da, da. You could just say, unfortunately, the order was placed in two days and I'm sorry, you know, da, 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 da. Try to go back and review what happened. In this case, this young lady said that she felt like she wasted 30 minutes only to be told that I couldn't help her. What I said was, 
There are times when I cannot offer the services that clients desire. However, I do think that the consultations are beneficial because there are alternatives that I offer, referrals that I offer, and also recommendations on how to find the off the artist that you're looking for. I literally did that on the phone with her. I said, hey, I think for what you're looking for, you need to look for, a, for an artist who specializes in this. When you DM them or when you reach out to them, tell them this because... What I offer and what you are looking for are not the same thing, and there's no way I would have knew that based on based on this consultation. But I didn't think it was a waste because I think I got you closer to where you were when you started. You know what I mean? I didn't say that to her, but this is what I'm saying to y'all. I think she got closer to where, she, to where her goals were. So, no, it wasn't with me, but at least it was like now you know what to look for specifically. Sometimes you're going to be on the phone with somebody to tell you that. You know what I mean? Like, that's... that's you know, but I'm one of those people. I find a lesson in a, in a learning and I try to find a benefit in all of it. But everybody is not like that. However, that is what I did. I, I reiterated what happened to the people who weren't privy to what, you know, what was said. She made a comment about the consultations being a cost. I didn't even respond to that because they are a cost and they are still going to be a cost. But if anybody who runs a business understands why consultations are a cost, that's how it works. It's almost like the pick your brain. Like, now has she sent me this? you know, through the DM and said that, I would have told her the same thing, but she didn't, I, you know, this is our first time meeting via the consultation. So boom, boom, boom. The second thing, the third thing to do is, what do I have right here? Um, do an audit. So meaning go back in your processes and see if there was a way that you could have, um, you could have like improved the outcome. So when this happened, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back and even fine tune. So this, so this service that she asked, it's clear to me. Maybe it's not clear to the reader. So I'm going to go back and change the verbiage. I'm going to go back and add another question to it because usually what me and my assistant do is I usually have them write back and say, ask her this, ask her that. But that's when I'm unsure. I was, I thought I was very sure about what she wanted. And when she got on the phone, she said something different, but that was based on something that she read online from somewhere else. And what she said to me was, I thought that you could like mix the color to make that dark spot lighter and i said nope unfortunately because it's dark it's just like dying hair you can't make you can't put blonde on top of black hair the same way you can't put a pink on top of brown and think it's just gonna make that color go away right so that's what i told her um and you know like i said she wasn't she wasn't pleased with that but that wasn't the result that she was looking for and so for me the learning lesson is let me go back and fine tune this process because i don't want that to happen again i i get no i gain no benefit from talking to clients that i can't help it's actually it's actually a waste of my time even though they paid their hundred dollars i would rather somebody spend the money that's going to do a book of service with me, then somebody just spend that $100. So like the $100 versus like $1,500. If I talk to somebody that's going to pay $1,500 versus the person who only going to pay $100 and I'm never going to see them again, which client do you think I would rather talk to? I would rather talk to the client that's going to actually book a service than the client that's just curious about X, Y, Z. So that is why I try to minimize consultations with people who are not serious that's the fee but i gain no benefit other than a hundred dollars yes because i gave you information that you did not know before you got to me if you didn't even know another artist which is what she said i never have traveled out of town for a cosmetic service i said oh i have a great artist that i could recommend to you that specializes in this i think she do a phenomenal job i think that is what you would i think you would get the results you were looking for with her not with me if you don't think that's beneficial, that's a personal opinion. But I think it is because now you know who to go to when you didn't before you got on the phone with me, right? You know, but that's that's kind of like, you know, just depending on what your thoughts about that is. But that is of no benefit for me to just talk to people and nobody books a service. I would rather talk to a client who is going to book a service. But because this happened, now I'm going to go back and fine tune my process even more. If there were no holes in that process, you know, nothing is perfect, then I'm going to be like, well, you know, every now and then that happens. But if it could be a situation where it's like, hmm, perhaps instead of asking it this way, I can ask it that way. So that's what I would, that's what I'm going to do now. 
I'm gonna go back and review her application and see. I'm a I'm a I'm a Michelle Obama that thing. Y'all know that Michelle Obama mean when she doing like this. I'm gonna do like that on my consultation application. I'm gonna be like, where is it that she did it? Because this has not happened to me yet, right? I have yet to have a consultation where somebody was not of a benefit. Now I have had consultations where people like they answered the wrong thing, and I'm like, yeah, well the question says this, and you answered this, and they'll say, oh well, I thought it meant. Nope, it, it meant what it asked. Oh, well, I didn't know. Or people will go, yeah, well, I was hoping that when I talked to you, you would look at it. And, and I'm like, nope, the questions are there for a reason. You can't you can't lie on the questions and then think that I'm going to change my mind. I'm not going to say that was the case here because I don't think it was the case. But um, that's for me to go back and audit, right? For me to go back and look at, for me to go back and review the process and see if there's a way that I can improve the process to minimize this. Right. So first thing is to remain professional. Second thing is to audit your own processes, audit your inventory, audit the way you do things to see if that would have changed the outcome. And the last thing is um, I always try to offer um, an alternative. Right. So if they write a negative review, if it's something like, oh, I got something late, you know, it's like, OK, well, can we send you something else? What I did was I said, unfortunately, I'm unable to help you. But during the consultation, I offered her another artist. I told her what to look for when she's looking for artists. I told her to beware of things like this. Look for an artist that does this. Make sure that they have this. I asked, I told her like all of these credentials to be looking for when she sees artists. That way you don't you don't get on the phone or you don't go to a service and you don't get what you don't want. Cause she had a lot of, um, she was like, I don't want this. I don't want that. She had a lot of anxiety about how she didn't want the outcome to look. And I'm like, okay, well, if that's what you want, make sure you, you do this, make sure you do that. Like I said, I thought the consultation was still beneficial, but she gave me a negative review and that happens. And then, so finally I would say, just know that Baby, you ain't gonna be able to you ain't gonna be able to please everybody and you're not gonna be able to help everybody. And if you go into business thinking you're gonna be able to help every single person that ever knew that you existed, your feelings are gonna be hurt. So do not do that. Just know that shit gonna happen. Okay, it's gonna happen. You're gonna get somebody who is not gonna be happy. And I will I would just also like to say that, you know, sometimes it is also a little beneficial if you have a negative review so people can see how you respond to negativity. Right. So I got a five, I had a five star review and it was always 100. But people probably might have thought that was fake. Right. That might have been like, ain't no way that all these girl clients love her like they do. Because, baby, my clients be raving about me, honey, in the comments and you know, on the Google reviews. They be raving about your girl. They be saying some real some real deep, heartfelt stuff. So I'm also like, you know what, this is really not a bad thing because it just shows that like, no, this service is not for every single in individual. And to me, it, it says a lot about integrity. I would rather refer you to somebody else that can de deliver the services that you want than take your money and you not be pleased with the outcome of the results. Right. So, you know, that's just a me thing. If somebody else disagrees and doesn't see the benefit to that, then that's just a difference of opinion. But I think the average person can. And to see it happen in real time, like when people write negative reviews under the Google, I always see what how they responded. And then that makes me be like, you know what? I fuck with Shawty because she that was that was all the way 100. So that's how I feel. I'm like, you know what? It's not really a bad thing. You can think it's like that, but it's not really because... It's a lesson for you to improve your business, to troubleshoot, to see where it is that you're falling off. And it also is a message to potential people that one, you either X, Y, Z or two, how you handle negativity. And everybody want to be everybody at this point. We all are craving like humanity because the robots are coming. Right. So we all want to make sure that we are having human interactions with people who care. And I am in the business of serving and taking care and helping people. And I want you to know that. And I hope that that shines through and in responding to negativity in the way that is professional, is sincere, um, does provide some level of benefit, whether you think it does or not, but other people may disagree. It's always a win. So I hope that was helpful. If anybody has any tips about what to do in the event of a negative review, drop it below, honey. The people would love to learn. I'll pin your comment. If that has happened to you, go ahead and share what you did or, you know, how you, you know, how you did that or, you know, blah, 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 blah. I would just say, 
don't let one bad apple ruin the whole tree. And don't let, you know, one person's perception of the situation um, take you all the way off your game. Because at the end of the day, like, it's always more than one side to every story. And two, you just have to remember that for me, I know that sometimes people just want people, you know, people just want to, people really just want to be seen, to be confident, and they really want to like, they really want to show all the way up. And sometimes what happens is people just get locked in on the outcome because they're so like, there's they just re they just really 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 hope you're the person and sometimes that's not the case like i'm not the i'm not the person for everybody and that that is beyond my control but as a person with integrity and as a person who cares and i am a customer and a consumer myself i always try to operate as if it were me doing business like doing business with somebody and how would i want to be treated and so i try to respond and work from that way and so I know that even though it may have resulted in a negative review, I know where it probably stemmed from was like disappointment in the fact that like she thought that I was a match and then like, damn, you're not, you know what I mean? So I get that. I know what that feels like. And I try to minimize that because that doesn't feel good to me either. I'm, I, I hate being like, mm, I can't help you. But... I have to say that because that's the nature of the business and I don't like... I don't like having people think that they're going to get something and then they're not, right? So that's what I'll just say, right? Uh, you agree? How you say it? Is it, is it my, is it, I don't know how to say it. I'm gonna have to learn how to say it. Is it Mardasha, Mardasha? How do you say it? Uh, how you, break that down. Is it Mardasha, Mardasha? I might be saying it wrong, but you know what I'm saying? Like you want everybody to, you want when people leave, you want them to be happy and satisfied. And you also want to be able to help the people you can help. And unfortunately you can't. Sometimes the cases are like too extensive. Sometimes it's like, baby, that's unrealistic. Sometimes it's like, look girl, I don't want to sell you a dream. I'm super honest with that. Sometimes the people be asking me for stuff and I'm like, girl, you're not really trying to pay for that girl. <laughs> like, baby, no, let that go. Nobody sees that. My clients are like that. One of my students last week, y'all, she um <laughs> she was mentioning like a uh, area on her face that bothered her and i was like i personally don't think that that is worthwhile to pursue for camouflage services but i i hear you i see where you're going and she like kind of joked about it like it might not even be a big deal and blah, blah 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 and then the other people in the class was like yeah we don't see it either but that's hard for somebody to say like what's important to you is what's important to you so nobody can like tell you what, what you have is not important but i want people to always be satisfied with what i do and so if i am not able to deliver i will let you know that up front before we continue this relationship and you spend any more time any more money and any more hopes and dreams get 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 built up right and so that's important to me so if you remember that as a business owner um everything will kind of come together. So does anybody have any tips they want to share before we leave or any questions that they have before I wrap up or any suggestions, honey, if you feel like I could have handled that a little bit better than I did, baby, don't feel, don't feel shy, honey. I'll definitely take, I'll definitely take the recommendations and the suggestions because I'm super new to this. So, um, I've only been in business for three years. That is still baby five, right? In these streets. That's very, very early. So I do not, um, I do not brag as if I know it all, and I love to learn from the OGs and the people who've been doing this long, because if you work long enough, you're going to piss enough people off, right? You're going to have some people who don't like what you like, you're going to have some people who love what you love, you're going to have everybody in between. And so, as long as you know that and keep that in the forefront, you're going to be good. Don't forget that. You're not going to be able to please everybody, and you're not going um, you're not gonna always be everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay, because I know I'm not. And I like it that way. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess that's a no. That's a yes. We're going to wrap up. So the book I was going to review that I just am not able to review is We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. I'm just going to take this as a sign to the universe that uh, y'all don't need to hear. I've been talking about it for a couple weeks. I'm just going to say read the book. If you have money gaps, which I money blocks, money struggles. Um, you know, I made, I, I had a very 
comfortable and um, reliable six-figure career um, before I started doing this. So I never realized that like I had money money issues. I was good at saving money, good with putting money away, paying all my bills on time. I had the things that I was real comfortable with, but like the the idea of abundance in the sense of like financial abundance. I always had like abundance, no issue with like love and like those things. But like when it came to money, I realized like I never had the mindset of the abundant mindset. Somebody said, yes, always 100% transparent with my clients. Bed. Yes, you have to, yes. It's like managing expectations, right? And do you, I rather manage expectations in the beginning before we even, we even go here. You know what I mean? It's like date somebody. It's like you date somebody and you like, I'm, I want to be married and the person is like, mm, I'm, I'm just trying to have a good time. You want to know if they're trying to have a good time or if they're trying to get married, like on date, date one. You really want to know that while you swiping on the phone in the app, right? Are you looking for a mate or are you looking for a fun girl? Cause if you looking for a fun girl, I'm looking for a mate and then everything I say is going to be mate driven and everything you say is going to be night driven, <laughs> like good time driven. And so this is not going to be beneficial. So that it's kind of like that. Like, what are your goals? What are you looking for? And I want to make sure that like we on the same page. So if, if you looking for something different than I'm looking for, then it's not a good fit and that's okay. Right. And the only way I'm going to know that is in order for us to have a conversation. So if you don't find benefit in the conversation, you know, that's just a difference of opinion. So. I would say always be 100% transparent uh, over and over and over again. Be very transparent because people need to understand what it is that you do and the way that you do it. And if they don't, then then that's just going to add in extra confusion. And that's really going to make people upset. And I, I'm like, I would rather you miss $100 than miss $1,500. You know what I mean? That's how I think about it. That's how I think about it. I'm like, you you lost 30 minutes of your time. If you think of it as a loss, I think of it as a win. Like I said, you got closer to your goal. You lost 30 minutes of your time and $100 versus two, three months of your life because that's how long it takes to heal and $1,500 because that's about the average cost. So that's where I'm at with it. So that's all I got to say. But yeah, back to the, the book. I was saying I realized I had money blocks. And so um, this book was so helpful because the premise of the book is we should all be millionaires. And when you have more money, you can do more as an individual, meaning like donate to the things that you um, want to be like all of the things that you think are basically at the end of the day. The people who make the decisions are the people with coins. So you can like donate to like people who you want to vote for. You can do scholarships for people. You can employ people. You can give people jobs. You can have better life experiences. It's, it's way more than just like driving a nice car, having bags, shopping when you want to. It's really about like living a fruitful life and living a life that um, affects and imparts and leaves a legacy on the next generation. And the only way for you to do that is if your dollars add up and they are able to impact um, the things and the ideas and the beliefs and the goals that you're interested in. And so seeing that in that way and reading it and having the words being written by a black woman was so empowering to me. It like sparked so much in me that I've been talking about this book and because this negative review happened today, I skedaddle away from that. But I just want to let you guys know if you're looking for something that can kind of like change your mindset. You know, people always talk about the the the, the greats like um, rich dad, poor dad. They always talk about uh, we uh, what is it the think and grow rich. They always talk about I forgot the other book that's about like the. I can't think of it now, but it's about the book, like, how to make your money, keep making money. But they're, though, all those books are, like, real old. And sometimes they're, like, written from a white man's perspective. Um, yeah, have you read it? I love her, right? You read it? I love her. So sometimes the, the books feel outdated because the knowledge seems so old or they're written in fables and you have to like, you got to like, you got to like a story, you know what I mean? Or you just like, yeah, but we talking about what's going on in 2021, you know what I mean? Like, what about what's happening now? Or that's easy for you to say, Mr. White Man, that me as a black girl, you know what I mean? That they don't really work like that. She wrote it from somebody who did not come from money. She came from a two-parent home. She came from the hood. She was like, they grew up up in 
you know, I think she grew up in New Jersey, but, you know, they didn't live in, you know, they lived in like an apartment. They lost their house before. She had a mom who battled with mental um, depression. You know what I mean? Like very realistic, very realistic um, life. And she literally is a self-made multimillionaire. And she now continues to help other women, BIPOC, people of color, queer, the LGBTQ community, everybody, anybody that's like dismarginalized. I hope I'm saying that term wrong. D right. She's helping anybody who does not come from, uh, you know, what America thinks is the standard. Anybody who doesn't come from that walk of life, help them become multimillionaires. So I just am trying to always, y'all know me, baby. I'm always trying to be a blessing and share a blessing and spread a blessing because I want the blessings to come my way. So I'm a, when I see them, baby, I'm going to open the door so they can come on through. And so that was my knowledge. And I decided I'm going to do a book a month. The last Monday of the month, I'm hoping somebody hold me to this. The last Monday of the month, I'm going to do a book review, right? So they won't always be business related. Sometimes I just read books that are like good. Right now I am reading um, Jennifer Lewis's The Mother of Black Hollywood. Y'all know who Jennifer Lewis is. That's the Jennifer Lewis. You know, y'all know who Jennifer Lewis is. <laughs> so I love her. I'm reading her book and it is fabulous, darling. Fabulous. So I might review that book. Um, so we're going to save that for the end of July. But if y'all have some recommendations for like books that you want to read together, I love reading and I love learning and so we can do it together. Faye, you know, friend, you know, you read the book that I, I shared to everybody. I always talk about that book, The War of Art. And so, um, I'm, you know, and somebody, somebody gave me a book, somebody DM me and gave me a book called The Success Principles. And I've been reading that book forever, but it is such a good book. Um, so if y'all have some books that you'd like to recommend, that will be what we're going to talk about on the fourth Friday, the fourth Monday. We're going to do a book review end of the month. And then I'll just, you know, keep it going. So I hope this was helpful. I hope um, you guys got some tips. If you were too shy to say something on live, no worries. You can shoot me a quick DM. If you have any questions about my services, you can shoot me a quick DM. If you are interested in our services, click the link in the bio. It says request a consultation. That is the free application. In order to book a consultation there is a hundred dollar consultation fee but it goes towards your service the 12 week year it's in my it's in my um i've downloaded it i haven't started it yet so it's i, I bought that book though he winches the art of war in that book that mean we own it that mean we own it <laughs> right that mean we own it so that book i have a i have like two books um that's like next so i'm trying to go back but now that you done said that okay so i'm gonna read that book next but bam, I'm gonna read that book next. I try to switch it up. I try to go from like professional and then like something not so heavy. Cause you know, sometimes when you read the business books, you be like, woo, child, I got so much work to do. So I try to switch it up. We are on it, friend. <sighs> Okay, well, cool. I'll read that next. So that's what I will read next. And then maybe if that book wins for the month, we'll review it. But Jennifer Lewis is just a good read. And because she's a business owner too, and she came from a, you know, a poor background and, you know, she done made it. I just love listening to people's like triumph stories. And she got, she got a hell of a story, y'all. She, and she's a phenomenal storyteller and she performs it. She sings it. It's just a good book. It's a good, good, it's a good, good, good book. She got a bunch of gems, a bunch of gems in that book that are worthwhile. So, all that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. Like I said, if you're interested in the services, click the link in the bio. If you want to know about our classes, click um, the bio training. I offer three types of classes. Um, you might need to get into that too. Right. No, no, no. You probably would like it. You probably would really like it. Um, and if you were too shy to talk on live, just send me a DM. And if any of this was helpful to you, let me know. Because like I always said, when I know that you guys are listening and it matters, that helps me to show up. Okay. So... All that being said, have an amazing week. Thank you. No, thank you for being here. Thank you for responding. Thank you for letting me know. You guys have an amazing week. Um, we about to be up on the holiday weekend. So I just wish you all the best and peace and blessings. Bye. Yes. Ew.